All right, let's keep going with this review packet. Um, the next thing we've got is verify each identity. So we're trying to go through and verify these identities. One thing that we want to look at with each of these is uh, come up with a, a plan or some way to get through and answer the questions or, or complete these questions. And so uh, this one, I'm going to go ahead and start off on the left hand side. I've got cosine squared x over 1 minus cosine 2x. And so a couple things I'm going to point out and look at is well, I've got this cosine 2x. We know a uh, an identity for that. And we've got cosine squared, which we know a couple things about as well. So what I'm going to start off with is the thing that stands out the most to me is this cosine 2x. Uh, maybe this isn't the right approach. You'll kind of get to see me solve this problem blind because I've not done these ones before. And so first thing I'm going to do is replace this cosine 2x with one of its uh, similar versions. And so in this case, I think I'll probably try and go with the one that is 2, you know, the 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And so if you remember back to our identities we were just looking at, um, we've got this one here, which says that cosine of 2a is equal to any of these three options here. And since we're looking at something that looks like tangent squared at the end, I want to have some sines and some cosines. And I've already got a cosine, so I'm going to use this one to see if maybe I can get a sine in there. So I'm going to replace this, two cosine, this cosine 2 theta with that. So our first approach, I'm going to just rewrite what we've got over 1 minus, and this is going to be 1 minus 2 sine squared x, and hopefully that will be equal to 1 over 2 tangent squared x pretty soon. And so if we go ahead and distribute this negative in, we actually wind up with cosine squared x over 1 minus 1 plus 2 sine squared x, and hopefully again that's going to be equal to 2 tangent squared x shortly. And so this 1 minus 1, those are going to wind up uh, canceling each other out, and we'll be left with cosine squared x over 2 sine squared x. And again, hopefully that's going to be equal to 1 over 2 tangent squared x. And it is, because sine over cosine is tangent, and so cosine over sine is cotangent, which is the same as 1 over tangent. So this is going to be equal to 1 over 2 tangent squared x, which is what we were looking for. And so I'm always on at, at my eye open looking for some things that match the identities that we've been looking at. So I see that cosine 2x, and that's sort of my first thought is, hey, maybe I can do something with that. I also saw this cosine squared, and I thought, well, maybe we could use some of those Pythagorean identities, but we didn't need them here in this, this example. All right, so that's that first one. Moving on to the next one. Number 10. We've got 2 sine squared theta x plus cotangent squared x, and we hope that this is going to be equal to cosecant squared x minus cosine 2x. And so I see this cosine 2x over here, and that automatically makes me think maybe I should start on this side and substitute in for that. Or the other thing is I need to make it so that somewhere on the left-hand side I get one of those three equations. But you know what, for me, I think I'm going to try starting on the right-hand side and doing the same replacement that I just did, which is replacing this cosine 2x with 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Because I knew that there's a 2 sine squared x on the other side, so that's what I'm going to try out over here right now. So on the right-hand side, I'm just going to rewrite what we have. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to replace some things with sines and cosines. So I know cosecant 
is 1 over sine, so I'm just going to write this as 1 over uh, sine squared x. I don't know, maybe I'll change it back later. Um, and then over here it's going to be minus 1 minus sine squared x. And so that's going to be one, minus 1. And if I distribute this negative, I get plus 2 sine squared x. And so now I've already got this plus 2 sine squared x that I had there to begin with. Oh, and you know what, now that I'm looking at this, I don't want this flipped over. I'm going to erase that. There we go. And now I'm, I'm pretty close. I've got the two sine squared x's on both sides. Over here I've got cotangent and cosecant x minus 1. And this is one of those uh, less used of the Pythagorean identities. But let me pull those up real quick. All right, and so if you have these ones, it's the sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. But we also have these two here. And I'm specifically going to look at this one. Or if we rearrange this, if we subtracted one from both sides, we would get cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared minus 1. And that's actually what we have right here. Cosecant squared minus 1 is equal to cotangent squared. So I can go ahead and replace this whole thing with cotangent squared x plus 2 sine squared x. And say, look at that. These are the same. I guess I just kind of have them written in opposite order, but that's still good enough for me to say these two things are the same. I verified this identity. All right. So I've got a little more practice, kind of like what was on the first page, some indifference formulas for the, val the exact values of each. So we're seeing 255. And I immediately think, well, it ends in a 5, and the only angles we have in our unit circle that end in 5 are the 45s, 135s, those ones. So what I'm going to use here, uh, maybe I'll just use 45. And so if I subtract 45 from this, I get 210. And so if we go ahead and look at our uh, unit circle, 210 plus another 45 is going to put me right here at 255. And so that's what I'm going to use here. Sine of 210 degrees plus 45 degrees. And I'm writing it down on the page, but you'll see it in just a second. And so that's what I need to look at here. Okay, and again, sine, when we're adding these together, this becomes sine of the first angle, 210, times cosine of the second angle, 45. This will be on your equation sheet, but, you know, if you remember it. Uh, then cosine of 210 times sine of 45. And so I'm going to pull back the uh, unit circle up, and I'll, I'll fill in right here as we, as we check on the unit circle. Uh, we get that the sine of 210 degrees is going to be negative a half. And the cosine of 210 degrees is going to be negative root 3 over 2. And hopefully, remember, your 45s are both just root 2 over 2. You'll multiply these together and add them. And you wind up with, once again, something that looks something like this. You'll get uh, negative root 2 minus root 6 over 4. Now, the tangent ones can be a little more complicated when you look at them, um, because you may not immediately remember the tangent angles. And 75 degrees is not on here, but 75 is, if you decompose this, you can get it into 30 and 45. And so let's go ahead and start writing this. Tangent of two angles added together is just going to be, if you look at your equation sheet there, tangent of 30 degrees plus tangent of 40 degrees, sorry, 45 degrees. This is all going to be divided by 1 minus tangent 30 times tangent 45. And we know the tangent of 45 is equal to 1.
And if you remember from what we've done before, tangent of 30 degrees is equal to root 3 over 3. Both positive. And so I'm just going to plug all these numbers in. Root 3 over 3 plus 1 divided by 1 minus root 3 over 3 times 1. And you know what? I'm just going to leave my answer like this. That's good enough for me. This would be my answer there. If you wanted to rationalize this further, you could do that. Um, but I'm going to leave it here for now. All right, last few questions here. Find the exact value of each. These ones are all kind of related, so I might not do all of these, but we'll, we'll see. Um, first thing I notice, this is in the fourth quadrant, and it tells me the tangent. So I've got that the opposite side is going to be 4, and the adjacent side is going to be 3. And there's a negative here, so you have to pay attention to where that winds up going, but we know it's in the fourth quadrant, so that tells us something already. Being in the fourth quadrant, this is going to be the angle we care about. The opposite side is going to be here, so that's negative 4. And the adjacent side is 3. And it's going to be positive 3 and negative 4, because it's in the fourth quadrant. Since we want to find sine 2 theta, well, we already know basically everything we need to about this, this triangle. Sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta. You can look at your double angle equations to figure that out. And then I'm just going to plug in my values. So sine of theta would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. That'd be negative 4 fifths. So 2 times negative 4 fifths times cosine of theta would be 3 fifths. And so this just winds up being 2 times 4 times 3, which is negative 24 over 25. And so we can do these kinds of questions like this. The next one up is cosine of 3 fifths, <coughs> where theta is between 360 and 450. Well, this is actually you know, you go all the way around once, and then you keep going. This is still in the first quadrant, uh, or, I don't know, the fifth quadrant. I don't know if that's a real thing, but it's going to be like this. And so 3, 4, 5 is our triangle. So this is the first step, is just figuring out which quadrant you're in. If you subtract 360 from each of these numbers, you'd go from 0 to 90, so that tells us it's in the first quadrant, and cosine of 2 theta. And there's a few different ways to figure this out. Um, in this case, I'm going to wind up using 2 cosine squared theta minus 1, because we actually know cosine squared already. If you wanted to, you could do cosine squared minus sine squared. It doesn't really matter which one you do here. I'm going to do this one. So this is going to be equal to 2 times 3 fifths squared minus 1. And so if we plug all of, all of our stuff in, we wind up with 18 25ths minus 1, which would be 25 25ths, which gives us what 18 minus 25 would be negative 7. Negative 7 25ths. Most of these answers are going to wind up being rational numbers, like a, a, a fraction. And our last two here, uh, we've got sine of theta is equal to negative 12 thirteenths, and it's in the fourth quadrant. So let's go ahead and draw that out. And so this will be negative 12, this will be 13. Let's make sure that I remember my Pythagorean triples. Nope. So I'll calculate it real quick. Okay, so it's 5, 12, 13. I just used a little bit of uh, Pythagorean theorem to figure that out. Did 13 squared minus 12 squared. That gave me 25, which is 5 squared. All right, and then we'll go ahead and answer the question. It says here it wants cosine 2 theta. Oops. 
I guess I didn't actually even need to write this one out all the way because uh, cosine 2 theta we know is going to be equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And you might wonder, why did I pick this one this time? Well, the reason why is because they gave us sine theta. And so I can just plug that in. 1 minus 2 times sine theta squared, negative 12 thirteenths squared. And so this comes out to be 144 160 ninths. So 1 minus 2 times 144, 160 ninths. And if you keep going through the work here, uh, I'm just going to rewrite 1 as 169 over 169. This is going to be 288 over 169. And then if we go through and actually do the subtraction, 169 minus 288, I get negative 119 over 169. And I, I don't think that reduces anymore, so this would be our answer. And last question, but not least, is this one here. This one's got a tangent to theta, so this one uh, will want to know the tangent of the angle. And so for that, we're going to need to redraw this. First thing first, though, is take a look at the, qu at the, uh, the quadrant. This is going to be in quadrant 3. So that means that our triangle is going to look something like this, at our angle. Um, I said it's 3 over 4, so this is going to be negative 3. This would be 4. And the first thing we actually need to figure out is, well, what's this, what's this length here? And this one's a little trickier because I don't think we're going to get a rational number. So let's go ahead and calculate this. So we wind up with saying that 4 squared is going to be equal to negative 3 squared plus our x value squared, right? And so we can do is 4 squared is going to be 16 minus 3 squared, which is 9, and we get 7. So 7 equals x squared. That means that this value up here is going to be root square root of 7, but it is in the third quadrant, so it's going to be negative square root of 7. And so what that means is that tangent of theta, not tangent of 2 theta, but just tangent of theta, is going to be equal to negative 3 over negative root 7. And we'll cancel the negatives, and we want to rationalize this. So we're going to multiply by root 7 over root 7, and we get 3 root 7 over 7. It's a little messy, but it's what we've got. <coughs> Instead of find tangent 2 theta, that's going to be equal to tangent, sorry, 2 tangent theta divided by 1 minus tangent squared theta. And so we can just plug everything in that we've got here. So in our numerator, we wind up with uh, 3 root 7 over 7. And in the denominator, we're going to wind up with 1 minus 3 root 7 over 7 squared. And so if we go through and do the work there, uh, I'm going to sort of simplify this 3 root 7 over 7 squared as my first step, but let's go through. 3 root 7 over 7 divided by... 1 minus, so 3 squared is 9 times root 7 squared is going to be 7. So 9 times 7 gives us 63 in the numerator, and in the denominator we get 49. And so this is, this is what our denominator of this whole fraction is, 1 minus 63 over 49. Now that I've got that, I'm going to replace this 1 with 49 over 49. So again, like if you wanted to put this in on your calculator and simplify it that way, that's okay, but I'm going to do it by hand. 49 minus 63 gives us negative 14. And so this becomes 
3 root 7 over 7 divided by negative 14 over 49. And so then we're going to rewrite this dividing by a fraction. It's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. <coughs> so this is going to be equal to 3 root 7 over 7 times 49 over 14. Oops, that's negative. And so this 49 and 7 are going to sort of cancel out to give us just a 7. And then the numerator, we get oh, what I've got here as well, a 7 over 14. So those will cancel out as well. Which gives us just a 2 in the denominator. So we wind up with 3 root 7 over 2 as our answer. All right. So that's the whole review packet. Hopefully you find this helpful. Uh, good luck.